on this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. Why are we returning to the moon, comparing Apollo and Artemis? After all, NASA sent astronauts there six times during Apollo, yet here we are, over 50 years later, still struggling to return. Apollo's cost was staggering, $290 billion in today's dollars and it consumed 4% of the U.S. budget. In contrast, Artemis operates with a fraction of that funding and far loftier goals, aiming not just to land, but to build a sustainable presence on the moon. The challenges are immense. Billion-dollar cost overruns, melting heat shields, and retrofitting decades-old hardware for today's missions. So why does recreating something we did half a century ago feel harder than ever? When Apollo 17 astronauts returned from the moon in 1972, they likely didn't realize they would be the last humans to venture beyond Earth orbit for over 50 years. The Apollo program was a triumph of its era, achieving six manned moon landings between 1969 and 1972, driven by Cold War urgency and the bold vision of President John F. Kennedy. But while Apollo planted flags and collected samples, it wasn't designed for sustainability. Artemis, NASA's modern lunar program, aims to pick up where Apollo left off, but with far greater ambitions. Artemis II, planned for 2025, will send astronauts on a 10-day mission around the moon, reminiscent of the Apollo 8 mission of 1968. However, unlike Apollo, Artemis's goal isn't just to land on the moon, but to establish a long-term presence, build the Lunar Gateway space station, and prepare for missions to Mars. This grand vision brings challenges Apollo never faced, making a return to the moon more complex than simply repeating past successes. In the 1960s, the Apollo program was fueled by Cold War urgency. The U.S. poured unprecedented funding into NASA, devoting nearly 4% of the national budget to space exploration. Today, NASA receives around 1%, forcing it to stretch resources across numerous missions, from space telescopes to Mars rovers. Moreover, Apollo had a clear and urgent mission, beat the Soviet Union to the moon. Artemis, however, operates in a very different world. There's no space race driving a national agenda. Instead, Artemis focuses on international collaboration, involving partners like Canada, Japan, and the European Space Agency. While this global approach fosters diplomacy and innovation, it also slows down progress and increases costs due to the complexity of managing multiple partners. Artemis also faces unique technical challenges. While Apollo used technologies built from scratch, Artemis has had to retrofit old hardware like space shuttle engines and boosters for modern use. This process has been fraught with difficulties, such as replacing outdated parts and adapting old designs for new missions. For example, the Space Launch System, SLS, combines components from past programs 
but has cost billions more than anticipated due to these modifications. The rockets of Apollo and Artemis share a common purpose, launching humans beyond Earth's orbit. But the technology behind them highlights a stark contrast. Apollo relied on the Saturn V rocket, a marvel of its time, designed to achieve its goal as quickly as possible. Its production methods were analog, and engineers often worked with slide rules and blueprints. Artemis's SLS, in comparison, combines cutting-edge tools like computer-controlled machining and advanced friction welding, which ensure stronger and more precise rocket components. Yet this modern complexity comes at a cost, both financial and temporal. For instance, Artemis uses re-engineered engines from the Space Shuttle era, which required significant upgrades to handle the intense heat and radiation of lunar missions. While these improvements enhance safety and reliability, they've contributed to delays and unexpected expenses. Similarly, the Orion spacecraft represents a leap forward from Apollo's command module. Orion is built with advanced materials and equipped with cutting edge safety systems, including onboard computers that can detect and prevent malfunctions mid-flight. But even with these advancements, unforeseen problems have emerged, such as erosion on the Orion heat shield during Artemis I. Engineers now face the challenge of solving these issues before sending a crew into deep space. The Apollo astronauts were hailed as heroes, often described as having the right stuff. Many were fighter pilots, accustomed to high-risk environments. The focus was on completing the mission, and safety was often a secondary concern. Tragically, the Apollo 1 fire in 1967, which killed three astronauts during a ground test, underscored the dangers of early space exploration. Yet, public and political support for Apollo remained strong, driven by the Cold War stakes. Artemis exists in a very different era, where society's attitude toward risk has shifted. Today's astronauts come from diverse backgrounds, including engineering, geology, and medicine. They represent a broader cross-section of humanity, with Artemis aiming to send the first woman and person of color to the moon. With these changes, NASA has adopted a far more cautious approach. Artemis missions must meet rigorous safety standards as public and political tolerance for failure is much lower than in the 1960s. A single fatal accident could jeopardize the entire program. This focus on safety means more time spent on simulations, inspections, and redundancies, but it also ensures that Artemis missions are as secure as possible. Apollo was a sprint designed to win the space race and demonstrate U.S. technological superiority. Artemis, on the other hand, is a marathon. Its ultimate goal is to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon, paving the way for future exploration of Mars. The moon serves as an ideal training ground for deep space missions. 
Its harsh environment allows NASA to test technologies like pressurized habitats, lunar rovers, and life support systems that will be essential for Mars. The Artemis program also focuses on harvesting resources, such as water ice at the lunar south pole, which could be converted into fuel for rockets and oxygen for astronauts. Beyond its scientific goals, Artemis represents a new era of international collaboration in space. By working with global partners, NASA is helping to set norms for how humanity explores and uses space. This diplomacy is crucial in an age when space is becoming increasingly crowded and contested. Despite the challenges, delays, and budget overruns, Artemis represents humanity's next giant leap. It's about more than returning to the moon. It's about pushing the boundaries of what's possible. The program will inspire new generations of scientists, engineers, and explorers, just as Apollo did decades ago. The moon holds answers to some of the biggest mysteries about our solar system, making it one of the most important places for scientific exploration. Apollo missions decades ago gave us a glimpse of its geologic history, but Artemis aims to go further, both literally and figuratively. Unlike Apollo, which landed near the moon's equator, Artemis missions are targeting the lunar south pole, a region full of potential discoveries. This area is particularly exciting because it contains craters that never see sunlight, preserving deposits of water ice deep within. Water ice isn't just a fascinating clue about how water traveled through the solar system, it's also a vital resource for future space exploration. Ice can be turned into drinking water, breathable oxygen, and even rocket fuel, paving the way for sustainable human missions to the moon and beyond. Lunar South Pole terrain is also described as absolutely extraordinary by scientists, like David Kring, a lunar geologist. Because the moon lacks atmosphere and water erosion, its surface has remained unchanged for billions of years, preserving evidence of ancient asteroid impacts and the solar system's origins. Advanced technology, like the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, has even identified specific rocks on the moon's surface, that scientists want astronauts to collect. While robotic rovers have made incredible discoveries, astronauts bring something robots can't match, adaptability and efficiency. Humans can quickly collect large numbers of samples and make on-the-spot decisions about what to gather. These samples can then be studied on Earth with tools far more advanced than what can be sent into space. For instance, Artemis 1 is carrying a shoebox-sized probe called Luna H Map to map the location of polar ice deposits, but human boots on the ground will provide the context and insights needed to understand these findings fully. Finally, the Moon is the perfect place to prepare for Mars. Mars is over 200 times farther from Earth than the Moon, and its harsh environment demands technologies like pressurized habitats, durable spacesuits, and ways to shield astronauts from radiation. The Moon offers a safer testing ground for these innovations, and successful lunar missions could provide a blueprint for sustainable exploration of distant worlds.
Returning to the moon isn't just about science, it's about inspiration. With Artemis missions set to deliver live video from the lunar surface, people worldwide will start seeing the moon not as a distant object, but as a real place. This excitement could ignite a new generation of engineers and scientists, much like the Apollo program did decades ago. The moon is not just a destination, it's a gateway to the future of space exploration. Artemis is our chance to remember, not just how to go to the moon, but why exploration matters. It's not a race this time, and there's no rush. But by choosing to do the hard things, Artemis is setting the stage for humanity's future among the stars. As we conclude this virtual odyssey, we invite you to like and subscribe to our channel to embark on further cosmic explorations. With every click, you elevate our pursuit of knowledge and contribute to the collective understanding of our universe.